whoa, we are no longer flirting with all-time inventory lows. It's just the painstaking reality in all three property categories. Inventory is up week over week, but it's barely a trickle. In this video, we're going to go over the single family and condo markets in the state of Massachusetts. We're also going to do an interest rate update. And let's talk about how all cash buyers are becoming disruptive. And for the luxury home of the week, we are headed to Concord to look at a 23 acre equestrian estate. This place is awesome. Hi, I'm Jeff Chubb. I'm a recovering investment banker turned real estate agent. I've sold more than a thousand houses. If you have any questions about the real estate market, then know I am here to help. All right, so we put in an offer this week, and it was one of those disruptive ones that we had talked about earlier. Cash offer, no home inspection at, at a luxury price point. There ended up being three offers, including ours. We are guaranteed getting the deal, even being a cash offer with no home inspection and going over the asking price. It's down to us and one other buyer whose offer is pretty much nearly identical to ours. Cash is king, but it's not a guarantee, and that's something that you need to keep in mind if you are one of those cash buyers. But now, let's jump into the single family market stats. We currently have 3,859 single family homes currently on the market. Now, inventory is up by 60 units from last week, so that is something. But to compare this week to last year, we had a 205 unit inventory bill for the week. This seller's market, well, it's just getting stronger. Compared to inventory levels 28 days ago, we now only have an additional 12.4% more houses on the market. It should be a lot more than that. But this graph will really emphasize the difference. It's no longer flirting. Look at that blue line. We are significantly below the inventory levels that we saw back in 2021, as well as last year. Compared to last year, we now have 737 fewer houses on the market. And when you compare it to 2021, which used to be the historical low for inventory, we now have 487 fewer houses on the market. This is just getting crazy. I'm going to reaffirm my prediction that I don't see inventory levels going over the peak of 5,000 units this year. I'm actually going to be very surprised if we go over 4,500 units for peak inventory, which is going to set buyers up for a painful fall market. We had 1,161 houses come on the market this week. And that's not bad, but 446 units or 28% off the same week last year when 1,607 single family homes came on the market. Now the four week rolling average was 1,123 units. So I guess we were right at average. We just should be seeing more inventory coming on the market huh? right now. Where's the inventory? It was another strong week for under agreements. There were 1,123 houses that sold. Now, this is compared to the 1,479 units that went under agreement last year, which means we saw a 24% decrease in the amount of homes that went under agreement. So new listings were down by nearly 28%, while pendings were down by 4%. Now, this is smaller than last week's imbalance, but still an imbalance. In other words, if this keeps up, it's only going to become a more and more severe seller's market. There are 643 single family homes that closed last week for an average sales price of $748,000 and then that median sales price of $612,000. Months of inventory. This is how we determine what type of market we're in. Zero to five months is considered a seller's market. With the closer that you get to zero, the more aggressive of a seller's market it is. This week, months of inventory fell to 1.77 months compared to last week's 1.88 months. This continues to indicate that it is a strong market for sellers and it's only getting stronger. Real quick. Here's my shameless plug. I just wanted to mention that if you're thinking about buying or selling a house, then it would be a true pleasure to help. Now on to that condo market. We have 2,314 condos on the market as of Monday. Now the amount of inventory that we have on the market actually went down week over week. Yes, it's only by eight units, but it shouldn't be going down right now. By the way, a quick side note, everyone thinks us agents that we love this type of market. For the record, we absolutely hate it. We are as miserable as the buyers are. Well, for the most part, I mean, it's just awful. Just like the single family market, that little blue line is very noticeably below the red line. There is no hiding our record low inventory levels. We now have 171 fewer condos on the market today than we did today last year, making for a new record low this week. This is something I don't see magically getting any better for buyers anytime soon. There were 499 condos that came on the market this week. The four week rolling average is 514 units. So we were a little below that number, but we were 155 units or 23.7% off of last year's numbers when 654 units came on the market. Now under agreements continue to be really strong in the condo market, which is obviously a major factor as to why you're seeing inventory decrease. 
We had 476 condos go under agreement this week. Now, the four-week rolling average is 460 units. So it's not like this week's pendings are a crazy number over and above that. What makes it very interesting, though, is comparing it to last year's data when 532 units went pending. That means we were only 56 units shy or 10.5% off of last year's pace for under agreements. So inventory was down by 23.7% compared to last year's numbers, while pendings were down by 10.5%. Keep in mind that last week pendings were actually up over last year's numbers. So there were 302 condos that sold this week for an average sales price of $752,000 and that median sales price of $538,000. In that months of inventory, it actually plunged to 2.11 months from last week's 2.3 months. Do you like hearing about what's going on in the state of Massachusetts in regards to real estate? Then I appreciate you hitting that like button as it makes a huge difference to those YouTube gods. And by the way, subscribing, that one doesn't hurt either. There have been worse weeks when it comes to interest rates, but they definitely ticked up slightly as we waited for the consumer price index data. And it came out. It came in right as we expected at 0.4%. What does that mean for rates? <laughs> Who knows at this point? That may, however, give the Fed enough cover to pause for the next meeting. If I was a betting man, however, then I would bet that we are going to see more of the same when it comes to interest rates. We'll stay right in the same interest rate range with them not really breaking out in any direction for the foreseeable future. Well, unless something crazy happens, which I've now become conditioned for, quite frankly, the crazy. Thanks, COVID. And now let's talk about how all cash home buyers are becoming disruptive to the housing market. In April, cash buyers commanded the biggest share of the shrinking home sales market in nearly a decade. Cash buyers represented 33.4% of transactions for April, far above the levels hovering around 25% for most of the past decade. <laughs> I thought this one was funny. The article quotes a mortgage broker as saying, cash offers used to be an occasional nuisance, and now they are becoming disruptive to the market. I could see how a mortgage banker would think that and think that cash offers are bad. And they are tough for a buyer who is utilizing financing to win against. There are things that borrowers who are utilizing financing can do to help. Borrowers in this market need to be fully approved. At this point, you are pretty much wasting yours and other people's times if you just have a pre-approval. You also need to be approved by a reputable bank. I can't, I can't scream how important this one is. With the ability to close in 14 days. A cash bid will always carry more weight, but sometimes creativity can win the day. And experience. You need to be working with an experienced agent. It doesn't cost you any more and can be the difference between winning the bid and not winning the bid. And now on to the luxury home of the week, which is a six bedroom, six full and one half bath home nestled on a rolling 23 acres in Concord. Built in 1995, this estate starts with a 7,324 square foot brick home that has an attached three car garage. From the moment you enter, you will be immediately notice the high ceilings with the family room being two stories with a stunning floor to ceiling stone fireplace expansive kitchen with high-end appliances a library a large dining room that was just made for entertaining and then there's the master bedroom which is a 21 by 16 size room with vaulted ceilings and dormered windows and an awesome fireplace it's just an awesome room the house it's beautiful but let's move to what makes this place so unique and it all starts with the 15 stall barn an indoor and outdoor ring 15 grass paddocks and for the fact that the house is connected on three sides to sprawling conservation land and for the kickers there's an additional two bedroom 1282 square foot guest house for the in-laws or anyone else who stops by to visit this opportunity is being marketed with an asking price of eight million and five hundred thousand dollars want to talk about your own personal real estate needs i do the luxury house of the week well just for fun my specialty and my love is helping the normal guy not the gal buying a nine million dollar horse estate and when it comes to helping people sell, well, my goal is to provide the same service that that $9 million mansion folks get, but for us non $65,000 per year property taxpayer folks, right? Every person's home is their castle and they deserve to be treated that way. All of my contact information, it's in the description below, but you can also visit me at youtuberealestateagent.com. Just fill in your name and your number and then I'm going to reach out to you, whatever works best for you. I love talking about real estate. So whether you're looking to buy or sell a house the next nine or 90 days, it doesn't matter. I want to talk to you and just hear about your real estate goals. So reach out today and until next time.